Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian number 11. This week's guest is Supercon Toby. Uh, if you've been to any con in South Florida, more specifically the Magic City Comic Con, Anime Miami, or Florida Supercon, you've most likely seen Toby running around handling business because he's in charge of a lot of things, cosplay, and does it very well. Uh, that amount of work, he handles pressure uh, beautifully. Uh, but Toby... Uh, I I've known for I've known for a little bit, but never super personally. But after this episode, after this after we recorded this podcast, uh, Toby is one of the nicest, most genuine people uh, I I've met. He's so uh, what's the best way to put this? He's so passionate about cosplay and just the people behind it, and art and expression and. Uh, is just so supportive of what cosplay is and it's very refreshing um from someone who who tries to take cosplay seriously and uh, you know puts puts myself out there and puts my work out there uh toby's the kind of guy that you want seeing your stuff he's really really cool um i don't know what i meant by any of that but uh i'm pretty sure you'll you'll get it by the end of this (laughs) but uh we we talk about what it was like um working supercon behind the scenes um uh how it was seeing the other side of heroes of cosplay which was filmed at anime miami he was a part of that as well um his favorite moments uh, a couple great stories um hashtag bring miggy back uh which you'll you'll know what that means after the end of this but thanks for checking this out um i appreciate it as per usual and i guess that's about it we're already at a two minute intro because i talk a lot and don't look at the time and then I ramble about nothing but anyway enjoy the uh, interesting podcast with Jedi Brian episode 11 with Supercon Toby And then we just talk into these microphones. For like, just however long we want? For like, however long we want. Usually right. they're like an hour. Roughly. All right, cool. You know. So like, fire away on the questions whenever you're ready. Just questions. You're Toby. Yes, I'm hi, Toby. Toby. Hi. Say hi, Toby. Hi, Toby. <laughs> I'm, say hi, Toby. Hi, Toby. Su- Supercon Toby. Super, Supercon Toby. Supercon Toby. Facebook.com slash Supercon Toby. Yep. Is it really Supercon Toby? Yeah, actually, like, that's my official, like, URL. Supercon Toby. That's awesome. Like, I got it, and I, I was like, it's not taken. Holy crap. All right, sure. <laughs> Done. Like, it started out, I posted a status because a lot of people were like, you should get a page. You should make a page. Just do all this stuff on a page. And so I'm like, you know what? If this status gets 50 likes, I'll make a page. Because, you know, 50 likes starts out a good page. It's a good number. Absolutely. It was like 30 when I went to bed. And then apparently all my friends are night owls because I, I woke up and it's 52 and I'm like, damn. <laughs> all right, now I got to go through this again. I liked it. <laughs> so I found like the only picture that's appropriate. Of me, <laughs> and it just happens that like I'm in my my like old Kirby shirt and oh, my yes. hat and the goggles, and it's it's Travis's photo, um, Facebook.com slash Travis Photography. Travis Photography. Travis Photography. Plug, yeah. Plug. Um, and then the the header is from like Magic City in the costume contest when I wasn't even like the head yet. So oh, really. <laughs> so eventually I'm gonna need a new header photo for my page, but yeah. So I mean, just post about stuff with Supercon. The weird emails I get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, there was a girl who's like, um, I'm 15. How naked can I be? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, I'd prefer you clothed. <laughs> you, but l- Legally, I can't answer this question. Yeah, like, <laughs> no. Just no. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, and then it's just stuff like, you know, what can I do on stage during the costume contest? Oh, and wow. a lot of it is stuff like, like really specific questions about costumes oh really but i'm not a judge i can't really answer that so i'm just like 
Uh, Enter anyway. The least the judges can do is say no. Like right. So you're so if people are emailing you, they need to know you're more on the organizational part of it. Yeah, pretty much. And actually running it as yeah. opposed to rules. Yeah. So I'm not like judging it. I just kind of organize it. I do enforce the rules though. So like, how big can my sword be? It's got to fit through the door. It's got to be able to be weapon checked. Right. How sharp can it be? Nothing but a blunt edge. Right. Like I do enforce the rules, but like the really specific stuff, like. I made my pants out of cotton right. with, with a with a so-and-so stitch on like a so-and-so machine. Is that legal? I'm like, <laughs> it's pants, yes. Right, yeah. As long as you're wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're actually wearing clothes, I'm fine. <laughs> like I don't have to I don't have to like freak out at you for that. What's the weirdest email you've gotten? Like just like, whoa. The weirdest email I've ever gotten was Actually, the probably how naked can I be one. Like, yeah, especially if they're 15. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think the second one was like, I want to throw my friend off the stage, can I? <laughs> and my first part was just like, no. And then my second part was like, wait, is this for like a skit? Right. Or do you just want to like, do you just really hate your friend that much? <laughs> are you asking for me to enable you or allow your skit? Yeah. <laughs> Like, are you just going to, like, get up on stage during the costume contest, get your friend up there, and just, like, throw him off? Oh, my God. So, yeah, no. Like, there are some... <laughs> but then, like, every other email is like, I didn't get my number yet. Um, I signed up an hour ago. <laughs> and my response is always, yo, chill, I have a job. Right. Just wait. <laughs> just wait a second. I'll When I get home, I'll go through the whole thing. I'll send you your number. But so, normally, it's just, like, you know, just normal stuff for a con. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, what was your first con? My first con actually was here at the Mac in 09. It was a con called Infinite Bits. Yeah? Yeah, it was like it was like a poor man's E3 kind of. Okay. So they had like every gaming console from the original like brown box with Pong all the way up to the latest generation which at that point was like Xbox 360 PS3 I think. Okay. Sweet. And they had like the entire museum there. But then they also had like weird ones like the Virtual Boy and the Coleco. What? And they had like the 2600, the 5800, and the 7200. So like you could play all the Atari games. And then they had just kind of like off the wall guests. It was like that guy with the glasses, Ego Raptor. They had oh. a couple like live performances. Wow. Um, the only thing was, it was like the first introduction I had to the Mac as a whole. Okay. And I remember coming back to Supercom when it was at the Mac two years later. And I'm like, yeah, I know the stage is going to be there. They're going to have panels over there. And I'm like, wait, this is two floors? <laughs> Because Infinite Bits used, like, all of the bottom floor, but, like, everything was downstairs. So panels, main stage, exhibitors hall, artist alley, uh. pinball machines, things like that. So everything was downstairs, and I'm like, wait, this place is a second floor? <laughs> so I go upstairs, and I'm like, this is a whole new world. <laughs> we can have that up here in a yes. time downstairs. <laughs> we can have everything in this place. Wow. But, yeah, huh. so Supercon 2011 was my next one. Sweet. And then that kind of like jump started my con career because right. Supercon 2011 was the first Supercon I ever actually paid for, like paid for a pass, everything like that. Okay. And then like the next Supercon, it was like, boom, your staff. Really? Just because like you were interested, wanted to do it? Or? No, I actually met um, Zipper Tan at MizuCon the month after Super. And oh. she remembered me and we wanted to do like the cosplay dance off together. And so she was just like, Hey, you're gonna come on as staff and help me out with this dance off. And so like oh like a couple months beforehand, it was just she sent me an email, it's just, hey, put your name down so I can get you a badge and just here you go. And that Whoa. was it. So we can thank Zippertan for this. We Supercon can Toby. we can really thank Zippertan for like Supercon Toby actually. I, I thank her every time I see her, so That's awesome. She she is my senpai and my mentor. She she got me my first spot judging really any sort of serious cosplay stuff she was the same yeah zip zipper tan is an enabler we are yeah <laughs> hi we're, zipper we're, we're team we're, we're team zipper tan yeah team, hashtag team zipper tan yeah, if there right? was ever if there was ever a splat fest yeah <laughs> just zipper tan all the way <laughs> oh man so 2011 2011, 2011 was the dawn of two, supercon toby was the dawn well almost yeah was the dawn because supercon was my first con and then i'm like this is like everything that i've ever wanted this is great Right. And pretty much back then, it was like, let me just go to a con as often as I can. Oh, sure. And I belonged to a group called like Orange Anime that would do panels. Oh, okay. So cool. 
pretty much every con they went to, I would go with them and do panels and stuff like that. So uh, it was like uh. Supercon 2011 was the one I paid for, and then Mizucon in August, and then like October. No, Mizucon was in was in August, and then it was Chibi Pa, and then I went to Swamp Con, and then Mega, and then like. A bunch of other cons like 2012. 2012, I went to about 20 different conventions, and it was, it was your like year. it was like stupid busy, and I was so out of money by the end of it. <laughs> like <laughs> that was me in 20, I think it was 2014, maybe the one that had uh, anime in January. Yeah, that one because that was my first time cosplaying, and it was the Cabbage Merchant. Yeah, and because I blew up, I was like, maybe I should try this thing out. So I just took him all around Florida. And that's how I. That's it's how like, I got it's like a statewide tour, like. It pretty much was the cabbage tour of 2014. <laughs> cabbage tour, you've got like a tour bus instead of wheels. It's just rolling cabbages, like. Pretty much, man. Around around the world on your cabbage cart. Yeah, <laughs> if I could. Can you I imagine wish. If I had one that actually like I could ride in. That'd be great. Yeah, put a motor in it, like attach it to It'd the be wheels, so like. So much better. <laughs> just an electric wheelchair motor, just. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting that on stage. Right. <laughs> we would we would need a ramp. I actually, that's how that's how we met, wasn't it? Yep. You were helping me put my cart up on stage. Yep. I was I was lifting the giant wooden cart <laughs> with the cabbages, yeah. and then I remember you like at the end of the day making salads for people. Like yeah, I was just ripping leaves off and giving them away, and it was like, how much is a cabbage? I was like, it's free if you find me at the end of the day. Yep. I will give it to you. <laughs> that's awesome. So all right, what um, oh, what what uh. <laughs> That totally threw me off. <laughs> I was like, something <laughs> fell on my head. Don't move. <laughs> uh, so what would you say your responsibilities were before to now? Because I'm sure you've progressed. I mean, you're super con Toby. So I yeah. started out with the cosplay track, just helping for the cosplay dance-off. Like, that was my thing. Okay. Um, after that, I actually got given, like, the anime track director role. Sweet. Yeah, and that was basically just, you know, stay upstairs, make sure all the panels go well, make sure the viewing rooms are good. Cool. Um, and... I sucked at that. Like, <laughs> I got to be honest, I really did. Uh, I didn't know what a track director did. It wasn't my thing. I was so used to, like, cosplay and being down here sure. that I was, I, was, I was like, what's anime? <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm an anime track director, and I'm making sure all the panels go smoothly, and they're just like, yeah, you got to go into, like, each and every panel and make sure there's people in the seats, and then you got to check IDs and make sure the line. And the worst part was is I became the, the anime track director in, like, 2013 Supercon here, oh. the really crowded Homestuck one. Yeah, yeah. And so I was in charge of all the anime guests, so I had to make sure they got to their signings, oh and I had no. to make sure they like got around safe and got back to safety away from the crazy guests. And right. so I just ended the day completely exhausted all the time. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't like this. And uh, my boss, Mike, took me aside. He's like, yeah, you're really bad at this, <laughs> but where do you want to go? And I was like, uh, is cosplay open? And so I started under this, this, this wonderful person named uh, Jennifer St. Pierre, okay. and she was amazing. Cosplay's officer Jenny, like I love her. She showed me like everything and how it went, and so it wasn't like I was thrown into it so much, but I was like guided along. That's and she was cool. like, "This is how it goes. This is what's gonna happen. Here's how you do this and this and this. This is prejudging. These are the forms they fill out. This is where you have to sit." And I'm like, "I can, I can do this. This is a little bit more manageable." Right. And so then I, I was a volunteer under her. And then I was a volunteer under, like, after after JSP left, because she moved to, I think, like, Sarasota. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was a volunteer. I was under uh, Brittany. Okay. Brittany uh, Nerd Bunny, Facebook.com slash Nerd Bunny. Yep. Um, shout out. Shout out. Yeah, I got to <laughs> shout it out. Uh, she was the cosplay director for Magic City Comic Con, which took the place of Animate. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So that was, like, a that was, like... About this this last January. Yeah, yeah. So she was she was the ho the head of that, and I helped her with that, and and she's great. I I love her. I love Brittany. She's great. She's she was she was a guest two weeks ago. She yeah she yeah. was. Yeah. Um. So I I absolutely loved her, and she helped out. So, like she she showed me so much, and just like you know she cosplayed, and she kind of like resonated with the with the people. Right. And so I was like, yeah, you know what? I can see I can see this happening. This is this is going pretty well. But then Brittany left, and so. Like 10 o'clock at night, I got a phone call, and it's just, hey, Toby, Brittany's out, you're in, by." Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool, I can, I can do this now, I got this. Right. And so that was, that was when, 
Supercon of 2015 this year was God. my first actual like head starting point of cosplay. Straight up Supercon Toby, yeah, full force. Pretty much. This year. So 2015 was like the birth of Supercon. Everything else was just like leading up to that. God, how do you like it? I, I really like it actually. Yeah. Um, I love the the atmosphere. I love being around like everyone. A lot of the cosplayers that are here are like close personal friends of mine. Right. You, yeah, Liz, I got Alexi over there. Um, I, I love each and every one of them. They're all very close, very personal friends of mine. And they do such great work that I can't help Seriously. but love them. Right. <laughs> and like every chance I get on my page, I'm always just like, yo, check this girl out. Check this guy out. Right. You gotta check him out. He's amazing. Like he does everything. Like I've shouted out so many people. I'm I'm thinking Facebook's gonna like flag me for spam. Like, yeah. like you've been promoting too many people. You're a spam page by, and I'm just like, no, I can write things too. Right, your page becomes one of those like cosplay pages that Pretty just much. shares people. Just like cosplay appreciation, also super con Toby. Right. <laughs> so all right, where where is the origin of the famous Kirby shirt? I know you retired it, and it makes me really sad. Okay, so the story is kind of morbid, and I've never told it before. Ooh! My ex-girlfriend got it for me for a Christmas present from Hot Topic. This is like uh -oh. 2000, like, I want to say nine. Okay. And no matter what, I don't know how it happened. I didn't mean for it to become a thing, but it just always ended up in my bag every convention I went to. Huh. So I just saw it, and I'm like, Kirby, all right, let's go. Right. And so that was that. And then I'm like, it's getting holes in it. It's getting old. I'm going to retire it. But I want it to go out on a high note. Sure. So what I had was like, I brought it to Supercon 2015. I didn't wear it. But I, I asked everyone who wanted to. Didn't even have to be my friend or not. Just like everyone who wanted to, who like knew of me. To right. come over and just sign it. Like, like write a quick personal message, just sign the shirt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to seam rip around the edges and I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna frame it. Oh, that is genius. Yeah, and so beautiful. I wanted to, I wanted it to go out with a bang, and this is like the most like heartfelt thing I could think of because I love all my friends and they're what like yeah, yeah. made me here today. So I'm just like I wanna do something like that shows my love and it's like everyone knows me for the Kirby shirt. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Just right. show off everyone that I love them, have them sign my shirt and just be on my wall for like a permanent part. That is amazing. That's a really good idea. Yeah, so that that's the origin story of the Kirby shirt. Oh, it's, oh. so podcast exclusive. Podcast exclusive, <laughs> exclusive interview. Exclusives. That's awesome. So, working behind the scenes a lot. Have you got to hang out with any celebrities? Anything? I like mean, that? there got there are some any? people who are like you know cosplay famous. Sure. But sure. so like, they're like the real celebrities in my mind. Like the cosplayers, sure. from like the people who have like just over a thousand likes to even below. Like I, I saw a cosplayer today with ninety two likes. I'm gonna shout her out later. Sweet. Um, but there's like, like I have friends that are all the way up in the millions, and it's daunting. Yeah. But yeah. in like, like actual celebrities, I'm like, oh yeah, hi. I'll meet them like backstage yeah, while yeah. I'm waiting, and they'll like walk in and just, oh hey, I'm like, like last night. Oh hey, I'm Ian Sinclair, so I voice like Space Dandy. I'm like, yeah, I kind of know you. I haven't <laughs> seen Space Dandy, but uh, all right, sure, you're you're Ian Sinclair. And he was like, yo, have a drink. I got some bourbon, and I was like, yo, I'm down. Right, yeah. I'm drinking with Ian St. Clair. Yeah, so I'm drinking with Ian St. Clair. Sweet. That's pretty and awesome. Ian, Ian's a fun dude. Like, he just sat down. He's like, I got bourbon. These cosplays, they're amazing. I love it. And I'm like, if you could cosplay one person, what it, what would it be? And he's like, I, you know, I don't have the hair for Space Dandy, but <laughs> I, I kind of want to. Can you imagine if the dude that plays Space Dandy is cosplaying Space Dandy? That'd be amazing. <laughs> like, like, you even sound like him. Either. I know. He'd be like, I know. <laughs> I am the dandy. I'm a dandy guy. Oh, man. That's like, um, you see Brian Cranston wore a Walter White yeah. mask to San Diego? <laughs> I saw that. And then, like, I think Tobey Maguire was walking around as, like, Spider-Man. Yep. Like, actually, like. <laughs> Genius. Yes. It's a perfect disguise. Right? Never it's you. Think, you'd never. You'd be, like, oh, it's look at legit that guy. you. Then they lift up. Oh, my God. It's really him. That's awesome. So, yeah, so I, I absolutely love it, working behind the scenes. And you get to meet, like, a lot of really, like, interesting people. Sure. Because I was working for the track when Heroes of Cosplay was filming at Animate. Oh, right. And so I got to, like, see behind the scenes about what everyone's talking about. And every and all the cosplayers that I saw were, like, complaining about Heroes of Cosplay. And they're like, yo, they're, 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 they're hacks, and they rig contests, and they mess things up. Sure. I didn't really have, like, that much of an issue with them. Okay. The only thing that, that I really had an issue with was when they were here filming, they took a really long time filming their people because they had to get like certain shots down 
because they're on TV. Uh, right. So if something went wrong, they had to like back out, reset, shoot again. And it took them like an hour to shoot like the four or five people that came down. Oh, man. Yeah. So like normally a, a prejudging is like, you know, three minutes each person, go, 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 go. Like, you know, so and so amount of time, tell us about your costume, what you love, things like that. Sure. They took an hour for like five people, and it was really Whoa. bad because a lot of the contestants actually got up and just left. Oh, man. Yeah, so I learned a lot watching like that, and I'm like, okay, I never want to do this again. Right, right. So like this year, there's this, there's this team from like a shoot, and it's called Cosplay the Documentary. Okay. And I think they're looking to fill that like gap that was left by Heroes of Cosplay. Right. Because there's always people that are looking in like, how does this work? There are more people like this. I can't believe it. Right. And they're always looking in on like our community, like our little thing we've built. It's a and thing now. Yeah. You know. And so I feel like these guys are actually like bringing to light what's going on. Because from the way I've heard of it, um, they followed a team from last year's anime in January to like this year's anime. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, and they've gone pretty much all around the world, and they're, like, launching it in May. And really? it's put together by a team from Ringling University. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. and so I met the girl who's actually producing it, and her and her team were so much more willing to work with our constraints rather than making a constraint for themselves. Right. And so we've, and so because they were so willing to work with us, I, like, budged a lot. Because they had, like, sure. cameras and sound equipment, and they had, like, one of their kids went to the hospital, and I was like, yo, oh, is no. he okay? <laughs> so I just, and, like, I emailed her before the, before the con actually started, and I'm like, look, anything you need, just let me know. Let me know before you actually need it, and I'll try, like, my hardest to ha make it happen. Sure. And so, sh and so she's just been, like, so supportive and just, yo, you're doing a fantastic job. Anything I can do to help, we're getting the kids ready. Just, and so I really, like, I like more like down to earth kind of like college student funded sure. productions. So more indie personal. Yeah, personal. it just it's just the whole like shine of heroes of cosplay left like eh. right exactly. It it divided a lot of people. It did. I saw so many good cosplayers just walk out because the prejudging session they came to was the afternoon session. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So like everybody comes to the afternoon session because it's Saturday and everyone's like, no, I don't want to get up on Saturday. No. Right. So they came to the second session and the, the, the heroes came to the second session as well. And so while the people are waiting for the second session, there's like people running around, like setting up monitors and cameras and wireless audio. And they've got like four or five, six different cameras and Yaya's in like full Sakizo attire. Yeah. And you've got Zipper who was a judge and like sushi monsters in her costume. And everything's like really bright and really like lit. And I'm just like, okay. Right. Let me just <laughs> step back, I'm sweating, like Right. That was the that was the one with Carl that had all the mannequin on it. That was right? Carl and Miggy and it was uh, the Crab Cat girls and Chloe. Gotcha, okay. And uh, they came down, and, like, Miggy was Black War Greymon, and the Crab Cat and Chloe was, like, Dragon Age. Oh, okay, yeah, Before yeah, Dragon Age even came out. Right, because uh, Marizin, Jessica Marizin works for the company, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. They, they were great costumes. They were I great. so bad for Carl. <laughs> I felt he was sweating. Oh, and, man. like, when, when the episode happened and after the con was over, I wrote, like, this long, rambling Tumblr post about it. Did you? Yeah, and because, like, I saw that everyone was giving these people shit. Like, they're cosplayers. They don't, like, deserve all the hate. Agreed. Because they're just, because what was happening was they were being led around by the production crew. Right. They had, like, no safety, no, like, chill at all. Oh. So there, I remember specifically this one scene that wasn't shown on the show. It was the Crab Cat Girls and, and Chloe. Right. And they were sitting down. They were turned around talking to this group of cosplayers. But they had this, like, boom mic held over them at all times. And oh. then they started talking, like, softer and softer and softer so the mic couldn't pick it up. So the mic operator just left. <laughs> and so they started talking, like, a lot louder again because it's still prejudging, so it's really loud in there. Sure. And so once they started talking a lot louder, I see out of the corner of my eye, like, the producer flicking back and forth on, like, this wireless earpiece because all the girls are mic'd up anyway. Uh, and so he's like flicking back and forth and he's like, yo, Holly, Chloe, and Jessica are talking. Get a microphone back over there again. And I'm like, really? Come on. They're sitting uh, down talking about costumes. Like, that really? Sucks. 
So the cosplayers themselves didn't have any real freedom at all. Sure. Because I'm trying to talk to all of them, and I'm like, hey, your costumes are amazing. They're so well done. And I think I think Holly's the shorter one, right? Or is that Jessica? Yeah. So Holly's in, like, the green velvet dress. Yeah. I think so, right? Like I think Holly was the one in the armor. Okay, so that's Jessica then. Yeah. Jessica's in like the green, like velvet looking, like crushed suede. I think it's. Oh, yeah, the huge flowy one. Yeah, the huge flowy yeah, yeah. one. And she's like dying. Like she's sweating. Oh. She's like, she's like just sitting down. Like she just wants to sit. And they're like, no, 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 come on. We got to move you to a chair. And we got to move you over here into the room. And then we got to oh. move you back. And we got to move you to the contestants. And we got to move you to the room. And we got to move you to the shoots outside because we're going to shoot by the bridge. Oh. And she just didn't have any rest, any chill at all. And I felt so bad for her. And I walked over and I'm like, look, do you need water or something? And all she could do was shake her head because she couldn't talk. Oh, man. See, they don't tell you that part. <laughs> no, like, of television. like the cosplayers have it on that show. They had it so rough. Yeah. And it just hurt to watch. Like, I, I really felt for them. I, I mean, there was a lot of hate about it. I enjoyed the show for the most part to watch it, you know. But it was because of, like, looking at what people made. Like, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Miggy. Yeah. Like, me. Besides just being an awesome dude and, like, legit hero, the dude's yeah. going to be a firefighter, you know? Uh, I remember the first time I met him, he was at his booth, and I was like, I saw you mess up wings. And he goes, yeah, silicone. Make sure it's not cold. Make sure it's not snowing, yeah. <laughs> I saw that on the show. He's trying to, like, cure silicone mode yeah. while it's snowing. I was like, okay, no. And he's like, I don't think this is going to turn out right. Yeah, right? <laughs> his black wargreymon turned out fantastic. Turned though. out fantastic, actually. Like, I saw it. And my first interaction with Mickey, I don't know if they showed it on the show, was they had me come over and, like, grab him to take him to the door. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I'm talking to him, and I'm like, wow, this is really sick. This is amazing. And he leans in. He's like, I have never been more hot in my life. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I get that. <laughs> I talked to him. I, was, I mean, obviously, he's going to firefighter school and all that junk. So he's pretty busy. But I was like, dude, you need to come down because I want to get him as a guest to talk about that. I mean. Living in New York, being a cop. Oh, yeah, no, he, awesome. he would be amazing. The other bad part about Heroes that I heard was that sure. the producers wouldn't tell the cosplayers where they were going until two weeks before the show. What? Yeah, so it's not like, hey, we start last minute by choice. Sure. It's, hey, we start last minute because we don't know where we're going or even if we're going. Oh, that sucks. So it's, like, super crunch. Yeah, so it's like, you're going to animate. When's animate? Two weeks from now. Crap. <laughs> Good luck, Black War Greymon. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's nuts. And I was really psyched when the girls actually won, like, Best Masters. I was really psyched yeah, yeah. for that. Oh, they're phenomenal. Holly, like, works magic with foam. I'm, a, I'm huge fans of it. Pretty she's, much everyone on that show. She's so amazing. Good. I She's fantastic. Yeah. How is she in person? Did you get to talk to her at all? I got to talk to her once. Yeah. And that was while I'm, like, helping her down from the stage. Gotcha. And she's just, like, stiff. She's, like... Right. Walking down all stiff, not, like, relaxed at all. Right. And then she, after she won, they stuck around to chat, and then she raced off to change out. Man. So that's something that other people don't know as well. Like, you look really awesome in pictures and stuff, but sometimes you're, like, dying yeah, for that they half were, a second. Yeah, they were dying, but they held it together really well, and they're champs for that. I got to admire them. Like, Man. So how, uh, how did, on, on that vein, how you doing, man? Uh, on that vein, how did... Um, Heroes of Cosplay come to here? Was it just like a list? Do you know? It wasn't a list. They actually contacted Mike. Yeah. And Mike looked up the show and was like, sure, it's TV, sure. Right. And then afterwards, he got a lot of complaints about it, and he just told me never again. Gotcha. He's had Miggy back a couple times, though. He's had Miggy back. He had Miggy back last Supercon. Yep. Not like this one This one just passed, but like last Supercon. Gotcha. And he was great. And I, I, I'm I, always like, hey, bring Miggy back. Yeah, I agree. Hashtag bring Miggy back. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the next movement. Yep. Supercon Toby says. <laughs> Hashtag bring Miggy back. Bring Miggy back. <laughs> That's cool, man. What is, so you've seen a lot of cosplay then, right? I have. Now. Who are, or what are some of your favorite cosplays that you've seen? Like, obviously, everyone's good to, to being out there. I mean, just putting yourself out on stage, I think, is super cool. Oh, props. yeah, no. Everyone's good. Everyone's great. But what are some that just like, wow. There was... There was one dude at Supercon this past year who got who was the dragon from Smite. And I felt what? I felt so bad for him because not only was it like half a costume. Yeah? It wasn't like half a costume. He finished it all. But he had to take it off and put it on over his head like half a costume. Oh, okay. But he individually cut 
each scale painted and burned in the same design on all of them. And this dude had like 10,000 scales. Good lord. And he won best in show, and I was just so impressed. The amount of work people do to these costumes oh, yeah. is impressive. I've seen this one girl, her name's Sierra. Oh, yes, the spoon She's, dress. Yeah, the spoon. She did a spoon dress. She did a water bottle dress with, like, with like a, a pop tab corset. Yep. She did, what was it? It was, like, Iris. She was, like, yep. a red-winged sun goddess. That moved. The wings moved. The wings she, moved, and they were oh. made out of actual rebar. Oh. She was, like, running around. She's 15. That's what blew my mind. She's magic. Yeah. They do something. There was... And there's like all these people that just come, even people that just come in like normal cosplays, store-bought cosplays. You know, you made it yourself, you bought it yourself. I don't care. Same. You you identify with that character. You do that character. You you do what makes you feel good. If you like that character, be that character. I completely agree. I know like, that that's a that's the dark underbelly of cosplay. When you get like, I mean, cosplay is cosplay, but there definitely is a community. Yeah. Like, there's a you can get into this community. And you can, can you can get into it very easily. Yeah. You can you can buy the cosplay. You can make the cosplay. I don't care if your edges aren't finished. It's I true. don't care if like you don't have a picture or like reference photos or anything like that. But you just do it. Right. Absolutely. Like, I hate to do. I hate to be Shia LaBeouf. Right. I really. <laughs> I don't like that meme. But you know, I don't care if your edges are finished. I don't care if your edges aren't finished or hammed or anything like that. If you have like threads hanging off, don't care. If you made a skirt. And it's for a cosplay, you do it. That's you. Absolutely. And I will respect the hell out of you for that. I, I tell people all the time, I was like, my my style is always to cosplay things either I haven't seen before or like something like obscure. Because that's just how, that's my style, right? Yeah. But uh, as such, I can't buy my costumes. But if I could, I totally would. Yeah. They're like, oh, there's a Cabbage Merchant costume to buy. I would have bought it forever ago. You know? If I could buy a car, absolutely. All I care about is having the character represented. Yeah. You know? So like, I'm for it. I don't care if your character's a giant Gundam robot and you want to say, I'm going to be 18 feet tall and be that Gundam. You know, careful coming through the door, but uh, yeah. but okay. if you want to be that 18 foot tall Gundam, you, you just, you know, put your heart and put your time into it and make sure your efforts match what you think. Yes. <laughs> Do you fully. Never never sell yourself short. All, if you don't have it in time for a con, don't bring it to that con. Agreed. Like, if you don't, if you don't have it ready, don't kill yourself. Don't rush to finish it. Make it on your time and then premiere it at whatever con you want. Absolutely. If it's a small con like Chibi Paul or if it's a large con like MegaCon, just, you know, don't kill yourself, but, you know, make that character. Absolutely. Because you don't want to show up and then have it not be the best that it could be, and then you start blaming yourself because you didn't finish it and you jumped right. the gun. But it's pretty great. Cosplay is a pretty great community. I, I love it. And it's so, despite all the hate that it gets like nationally sure it's a it's a very tight-knit community and i've never seen a closer group of people at conventions and cosplayers oh absolutely i mean there are cosplayers running around who will help no matter what you are we've got the cosplay medics here Whoa. and they're amazing they and they fix they fix more than cosplays they fixed my shoe they fixed my cart they saved my life i walked through I walked through. I walked through my shoe this weekend. <laughs> it was coming apart, and I was like, "Can you fix this?" Yeah, sure. Give us five minutes. I'm sitting over at my booth with like a sock on, <laughs> and they're just like, "Here's your shoe. Good luck." And it's duct taped, and I don't care. I'm not. I'm not cosplaying anything. It works. It worked. As long okay. as it works, I'm fine. Absolutely. They um, it was. I want to say it was Supercon this past year, or maybe uh, Magic City. One of the two. The way that I built my car is not very well. With the back legs, they're just a board like flat up against the bed, right? So I have to lift it up and then walk with it. Well, when I wasn't looking, somebody moved my car and popped the leg off, pulled it right out. They fixed it with like a glue and all kinds of stuff and a drill that they didn't even have. They like hand screwed it. I, all day long, shout out the Cosplay Medics because they're lifesavers. Cosplay Medics need to be at more cons. Absolutely, absolutely. It needs to be a thing. I know I went to, uh, I went to Dallas Comic Con last year in Texas and they didn't have medics from what I remember but they did have a cosplayer break room specifically for people in big costumes or that just needed a break from the con they could go and just hang out there so that was pretty cool that was the good one idea. thing I like that I've seen before I think it's comic Head in Tokyo okay they specifically have an area for cosplayer photos oh. like it's a large I think it's an, I think it's outside it's a large outside area where cosplayers go to take photos and if you're not in that area no photos at all 
Really? Yeah. So I, I always want to kind of like hopefully have this space to emulate that. Right. But I know that no one's going to follow that trend because it's always pretty much just, you know, approach someone in the dealer's room, kind of have a picture, and right. then you back up the entire thing while you struggle to get the shot on your new iPhone. Right, right. But, Absolutely. I mean, I would love to have that. Um, I went to Megacon. They didn't have, like, the trademarked cosplay medics, but they had something called the Cospital. <laughs> so you would go there. They, they kind of had the same thing, like, thread and stuff, but they were really basic. Not right. like, you know, like, pumpkin spice Ugg boots basic, but, like, right. it was basically <laughs> just, like, needle thread and hot glue gun. So, I mean, the medics are completely, like, staffed. They're, they're a functioning nonprofit organization, actually. Yep. And they come to everything. They've got serger, sewing machine, hot glue gun. They've got screws, nails, tape, everything you need. And they're fantastic. And they're, they're always trying to get to more cons. So shout out to the cosplay medics. Absolutely. What is your favorite convention? My favorite convention of all time. This is a loaded question, sir. It can be Supercon, because Supercon tell me. Or differently. It's a, anyone you want. My favorite convention... Just because I'm not that much of a comic nerd, I'm actually going to say animate. Yeah, really? Okay. I've I've never really been into comics. I've never like gotten like dove into the comic book scene. Sure. While I can understand and appreciate all the comic book artists that come to Supercon and Magic City Comic Con, right. it's never been my thing. Okay. And as always with like all these co like all these cons, you always get the same people in like costumes. So if it's a comic con, you get comic based costumes right. and th things like that. So what I like about animate is I like all the anime based costumes and manga and things like that. Cause I'm more into anime and video games and manga and things like that. Okay. So I love seeing all of those types of costumes. Not that I don't like seeing comic books. Yeah, of course. It's just, I can't walk up to someone and go, you're dare devil man bat. Right. Yes, you. Absolutely. I feel you. Yeah, that's like, because like my fandom's obviously Star Wars, yeah. but I can appreciate a good Star Trek costume. Yeah. So your fandoms, your main fandoms would be anime, I'm yeah. assuming? What so is your, what's that's your favorite anime? Honestly, an old one, just yep. the entire Dot Hack series. Really? Yeah. Okay. I remember waking up really early on Saturday morning to watch it because it premiered as part of like that Cartoon Network Fridays block. Yeah, yeah. So it ran at 2 a.m. Oh, that's so, commitment. Yeah, huh. so I woke up at 1 to get ready and like actually wake up and watch it. And then I would go back to sleep until I had to wake up, like actually wake up on Saturday. That's pretty amazing, though. And the fact that you thought to wake up and then like wake yourself up, like, I'm yeah. going to watch this for real. Yeah. And then and then I finally got like my first VCR and my first program, 2 a.m. on Saturday mornings, <laughs> dot hex sign, dot hex twilight. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. My favorite is uh, Samurai Shampoo. Yes, I, it's my favorite anime. That is, that that has one of the best art styles. I will say it's amazing. I loved it. Jin, if I could do Jin justice, man. You know what you need? You need a foo. I do, I do. I don't know if I could pull her off though. Brian, Brian is now <laughs> taking applications for a foo. Yeah. <laughs> I lo I love it. I um, so anime animates a good one. I always liked um. Tampa Bay is my favorite. The last two years, it hasn't been run well. I don't know if like they got new hands or whatever, but it just somebody's dropped the ball. But it's my favorite, not because of what it is, but because it was my first con I ever went to when I was like 14 or so, and it was 200 people in the lobby of a DoubleTree hotel. Now it's 50,000 people at the convention center. And this is Tampa Bay Comic Con, not MetroCon, right? Correct. Okay. It's at the same place though. Yeah, it's Tampa Bay CBCC. Yeah. So I like it's got Game of Thrones guests. I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. That's like their but thing. Like they always bring the Game of Thrones cast down. Yep. This year they kind of they were supposed to bring a heavy hitter and then it fell out. So I was like, all right, you're running out of big guys. What's next year gonna be? You got You got to bring some heat. Yeah, right, for real. Got to bring so. some heat to compete. I I do really like Supercon's guests though. You guys, I got to meet Billy D. Williams this year, Peter Mayhew. Yep. And I feel like there was one more. But Shatner's coming to Supercon, so. That's. What? I did not know that. Shatner, Shatner got announced before wow. Magic. Before Shatner got announced before Bill Nye. So, Shat William Shatner. William coming. Shatner. You gonna meet him? What? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> like I have to. That celebrity I'll seek out. Yeah. I. I when sh when Takei came to Supercon 2014, th 14, 13, 13, 20, 2013, um, he actually he and I actually met back in backstage, really? and. He was just sitting down, chilling out, and we talked. Yeah. And I and he was fun. I loved him. But I have a feeling I'm just gonna like, meet William Shatner in passing, and be like, "Yeah, hi, I'm running the costume contest. Bye." Right. 
That works. As that's long as it that's looks always at you, that's always like my worst fear. I'm gonna be like the headlining guest as I'm running to the costume contest uh. to like run it and help out. I'm just like, ugh. I at Dallas Comic Con, the biggest line in the whole place was Shatner's. An entire co like part of the convention center was for his line. I can I can the people. I can believe that. The second most was Nathan Fillion. Then I, th I was in that line. I can believe it. Yep. He walked by. Uh, Shatner walked by me. Is that a, like a sweet leather jacket? I was like, look at the Shat man. That's awesome. <laughs> he's he's supposed to be really really nice though. So that's cool. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, I've heard like rumblings that if Shatner comes to, to when Shatner comes to Supercon, sure. not if <laughs> that Takei also might. Oh. But just a rumor. Nothing. Right. Right. Nothing concrete. So. I mean, I really hope so. I hope Takei will come back because George Takei came like to the really crowded Supercon, the oh. last Supercon we had at the Mac. Oh, okay. Where we, like, I remember that one. Where we <laughs> broke capacity. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't move anywhere. Yeah, it was. But that's cool. So, who would be a dream guest of yours? Like, if he's like, all right, Toby, who would you want to have as a guest? If I could pick a guest. Yeah. You can pick more than one if there's a tie. Okay. Um. I want to bring the Try Guys from BuzzFeed okay. to any like Florida Supercon event. Sure. Just because I saw them do the masquerade for AX, and I feel ah. like I feel like they're kind of nerdy, and that everyone knows them. So I feel like they'd be a really cool guest to bring. Sure. The other guest guests that I would want to bring back, I want to bring Carl down. Okay. Shinka Studios, Carl. Carl Martin. Um, just because he's a really chill, really friendly guy. Cool. And I feel like if he had a booth to just show off his wares, he'd he'd get a not a lot more known because he is already well known. Sure. But he'd just have a really good time at his booth and maybe, you know, judging the contest and things like that. Right, right. And then the last guest that I wanna bring, uh, her name her page is like Kana. Okay. So it's it's like Facebook.com slash like Kana Cosplay or something like that. Okay. She's a she's a really well known, very gorgeous cosplayer from Germany. Oh, okay, okay. So some international star power there, and then the one person who I'd love to see here in Florida is probably Kamui. Oh yeah, where she can like sell her books and things like that. Because I love cosplayers that not only like do great work, but also teach other people how to do that work. Yes. So if she came here and sold her like actual books. Like, I love her books. I have them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'd rather have them in, like, physical form. Agreed. I completely agree. I want something I can touch and, like, smell, as weird as that sounds. No, I'm the same way. And, the I would, same way. and I would love for her to actually sign it. That would be amazing. And a totally different experience from holding a book and, like, while you're crafting and working on it, you don't have to keep looking at your computer screen. Yeah. You can have your book with it. That'd and be I, great. And I, would love, and I love because she's doing it and she's, like, showing people how. Sure. And so those four are pretty much like my dream. Yeah. That is, that is that is the dream. Like that is actually the dream. So, so then I'm assuming she's one of your favorite cosplayers of all time, one of your big ones. Kamui. Yeah. Um, I I followed her work a lot, and if I had more time personally, I would love to try to work with Warbla. Yeah. And I would love to try to like re sit down and read her books. Right. And like learn how she does these things. Absolutely. But it's just you know, I gotta find the time. I hear you. I hear you. So then, uh, friends not included, because that's bias and it's a loaded question. Who are some of your favorite cosplayers then? Like that you really like, that you're big fans of? Kamui, obviously. Kamui, like, Kana. Like, who would you recommend to be like, oh, you should totally follow these people? Okay. Um, moderately okay cosplay. Okay. He's a, he's a Florida-based cosplayer. He does fantastic work on a lot of his costumes. He's a big JoJo freak. Okay. Um, but uh, my my first and my favorite cosplay of his will always be Draven. Oh, really? League, League of Legends Draven, because his axe is actually spun. What? He does fantastic work. I love him to death. He's a great guy, very friendly, very personable. He's amazing. Other other ones I follow, um, gonna, uh, what is it? I follow this one girl. Her name's Heather Leet. Okay, yeah, yeah. I know she's her. she's amazing. Um, she's doing a lot of good things in life. Yeah. <laughs> so she's amazing. I love her. 
uh, leaping lizard cosplay as well. Oh yeah, Liz, Liz is the best. Got a got a shout out my mentor Zipper Tan. Yep, Zipper, Zipper Tan, Tan, Zipper Tan, amazing. She's Love her. A, like wizard magic person with a sewing machine. Have you seen her dresses? I've seen her dresses. Oh. I've seen what she does with fabric, and I'm like, if I even had half of your talent, I'd be amazing. Right? Right? For real. Like, if I could bottle her talent, I'd just, I'd make millions. Right, yeah. For, if only I had your talent. Right. <laughs> if I, there is, there's a couple, okay, okay, I'm going to go into Friends here. Right. Yeah. The, the two girls who won Best in Show here at Animate are Francesca and Jacqueline, I think their last name is like Farron. Okay. They do amazing work and they're super talented and they're a joy to talk to. Right. And I love what they do, and I love how they do it. Also, there's this, again, Sierra. I love her. Um, I think hers is like family cosplay because she's always yep. with her mom. Yep. Uh, other than that, I think, I think I'm think i really biased because a lot of the cosplayers I follow are my personal friends. Right, so. yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. What, what's your page? Followed, followed. I, My favorite cosplayer of all time is a guy named Ryan Wells. Do you know him? He's I don't know of, him uh, personally, but... You know, I've seen I've seen his work. Um, oh, someone else you could someone else you should follow because I'm really big into I'm really big into like props. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Jesse Malero. Okay. Jesse Malero uh, and Vulpin. I know Vulpin props. Vulpin props. Or, um, even even if you just watch his videos and you just get a feel for what he does, his work is so clean. It's crazy how much cl like clean. That's that's the best word for it. When you get people that put out clean work out of like foam or. Like, Resin casting, it's amazing. His his resin cast and his 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 like vacuum pulls yeah. are so clean and they're just so amazing. And Vulpin, like I I've been kind of like dabbling in props. I'm not I'm not anywhere close to anything yet. Sure. Right. But Vulpin is like the guy I go to when I need help and he's always willing to lend a hand. That's the best thing. When you get people that will actually respond and interact and like help. And I understand that he's busy. So I'm not expecting a response like uh, like right away. Right. But even that he responds and he tells me like what material is good, what material is bad, what I should do. Absolutely. Just I'll wait five days for that. Like, right. Yeah. I'll wait five days and I'll just put it off to the side. And be like, all right, I'll wait. Right. Absolutely. I like to follow cosplayers who do uh, work in progress. Like, how did you make this? Yeah. You know, like there's a detailed picture by picture how I built my cart, and I do that on purpose because like I would want someone to tell me how you did this right. so that I can emulate it. And they do that a lot. They're so good. I love I love just cosplayers that do that because they're amazing. It's a, it's it's crazy what people can figure out. Speaking of family cosplay, I mean like the stuff that they do. There's no template for a spoon dress, you know. And they just there's no template for oh. a pop tab corset. Like for real, for real. Like you just lay it out. And it's just like all right, here's how it works. Yeah. Crazy. Like I have, they put together some of the craziest stuff, and it always turns out great. That's a, like her wings yesterday. The costume she had yesterday with the armor, the, the wings were flawless. There wasn't a stray feather, and the, oh, it's so and good. And she hand dyed all those feathers. That is insane. And she's 15. That's the craziest part. That she can't even drive yet. She just <laughs> turned 15 two weeks ago. So good lord, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I, like I said, I've got some cosplayers that I personally admire. But I love every cosplayer that actually puts work into it. Oh, for sure, for sure, and they definitely do. They definitely do. <laughs> so, what has been uh, a highlight working the con circuit as you have? Um, like just a great experience from being SuperCon Toby. It's a it's a fantastic experience, and up and honestly, the highlight is just seeing everybody come up to the booth. Yeah. Seeing seeing the options before them that they can do and sign up for. And just watching them sign up with like happiness on their face, just thinking about what they can do. Whether it's the runway contest, whether it's the sirens, which is only girls, whether it's the main costume contest on Saturday, or whether it's the masquerade. Just seeing them happy and signing up and actually putting themselves out there, that's the highlight. And I know it sounds cheesy, like extra, extra cheese. I mean, it's like, it's like Hallmark cheese, but yeah. it's the good kind. Like I'm just, crying on the inside. I just love seeing that just because it looks so, I mean, it is so accurate. Sure. And it's so poignant, and I just love it. And it's real. It's, it's real happiness. It's like you've captured that moment. I d it is beautiful. As cheesy as that is, it is a beautiful thing to have somebody put themselves out there, and you, work in the booth, get to see that moment. Right. That's pretty great. That's I love pretty it. That's pretty great. What, uh, 
what has, is, is every contest different or is every contest kind of the same in your brain? Okay. You're a big fan of cosplay. Yeah. Like so, in general. So Supercon contests kind of follow the same template. Okay. There may be some changes. Like sometimes the Sirens is named the Supergirls okay. or I, the Sirens or I think one was like, what was it? The the anime, the the hentai girls or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that follows pretty much the same. It's always like 17 or older, sexy girl contest. Right. Um, the runway contest is always the same. Store-bought or handmade, no prejudging, go. Right, right. The main costume contest differs based on who enters it. But okay. it's always like normally the same rule set. And then the masquerades, also pretty much the same. It's always like a skit or performance or something like that. Sure. Um, what I like about Supercon is they have very specific contests. Okay. The thing I don't like is when I go to other, con other cons and I see that their craftsmanship contest and skit contest are the same thing. Right, right. I don't know why, it just irks me when I see that because someone will come out for craftsmanship and they'll you know, spin around and show off and yay, everything's great, and then they'll go back. And then two more people will come out and all of a sudden it's a skit. And I'm like, wait, that girl just, oh wait, this is a skit, right. but are we looking at their performance or their craftsmanship or both and just... Sure, it's, it's disorganized and throws you for a loop when you're looking to check out their costume and they're moving around doing a skit. Yeah. That makes sense. And with it being, you know, like how the costume contest and the runway contest, the runway contest is more like an exhibition yeah. as opposed to like a judging contest. Right. It's not, we're not really judging them based on the, the craftsmanship of their costume. It's more them acting in character and them walking sure. the runway. Sure. I dig it. My first award was a runway contest. Nice. It was actually Zippertan gave me the award. <laughs> and the judge's award. Yeah, Zippertan. Um, Zippertan starts everything. Everything. She is the queen. The unspoken queen the of queen. Supercon. She, was, she is my queen, yes. It was her, Alexia, and um, Danny Cosplay. Yes. They were the three judges, and I won Best Animated. I was like, what? And that started the journey that is now yeah, today. That was the crowning achievement to this day. The best I've ever done was that. Because, I, I mean, I'd gone the whole day surprised. Because I was like, yeah, I don't know if anyone's going to know who I am. Well, I was very wrong. A lot of people knew who I was. And the applause was so crazy. They were chanting. They are just like, cabbage guy. And I'm like, don't smile the beard off. Don't smile, the beard's going to fall off. And I'm so consciously thinking about it, but it was amazing. It was amazing. The, the experience is one of a kind. Nothing can ever replicate the experience of being on stage True. and seeing people cheer for something that you put your heart and your effort into. Absolutely, absolutely. You can go on TV and they can, you know, shoot you and film you and edit you any way you want, but nothing really compares to seeing the actual joy from people's faces and seeing all the camera flashes go off, right? That people are admiring what you did. It's pretty. It's pretty great. And that, like, cons are the perfect example of like an environment of acceptance. You know, because a lot of a lot of people are. I mean, socially awkward. I'm super socially awkward. You know, so to come to a place where you can love something as much as you want without feeling like judged for it, it's pretty great. Where where you can come and geek out with someone that also appreciates and loves the same series that you love. Absolutely. That is that is probably the best thing. I completely agree. Oh, now we're off the hallmark. We're so, oh man, I feel pretty great right now. That's a that's a great moment though. Signing up for it. I never would have thought about that. It's a good answer, Toby. It's a very I mean good that's answer. I mean that's honestly the best thing. Just seeing someone's face light up. When I tell them that for their costume, they could win a $1,000 best in show prize for Saturday's contest, or that they could win, you know, the Sirens contest and be dubbed the sexiest girl. Right. Or if they win the Masquerade and I tell them that their skit was on point, amazing, so well done. Sure. It sure. just makes it, it makes it so much better where someone figures out like, oh, I could actually get something from my hard work. Sure, absolutely. So there is, what, what are the Supercon cons? We've got Animate. So we've got we've Animate got, Miami, okay. we've got Magic City Comic Con, and we've got Supercon. Okay, so there's the three. three. Supercon's obviously the big one. Supercon's the big one. I believe it was 60,000 people plus. Good Lord. Uh, a couple months ago. Animate right now is on track for about 15,000. Yeah, that's but decent. last Animate in November, we actually had 12. So we're growing steadily. Right, right. It's a, that's, that's a good turnout for anime. That's the thing, because anime, like, 
I mean, Metrocon's massive, but look at where it's located. Yeah. You know, as opposed to anyone who isn't local has to travel either all the way down or all the way over. Yeah. Like, and, ta and Tampa's kind of like off the beaten path, yeah. per se. There's no one road to get there like Orlando. Right. You can't just like drive straight up 95 and then take I-4 over. Sure. You got to you got to take route, what is it, I-5, I, like 75? Yeah, take and then 75. To 75 and, and go up, and it's five hours, and it's just... I, I'm I'm lucky and cursed because I'm equally far away from everything. Naples is two hours to Tampa, two hours to Miami. Two and a half to three to Orlando. Yep, yep. So I'm equally away from everything fun. <laughs> yeah, until someone puts a con in Naples, and then you're like, my backyard, score! Dude, if that ever happens, I mean, they won't because there's no convention center or anything cool. But <laughs> and Florida has like 62 cons a year anyway, so. For real, for real. So I, um, if you don't go to one, they, you can find them at another. Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love the, uh, you know, actually, speaking of shout-outs of great people, you have a girl here who's an artist, Miho Art. She's a Sarah. She's over there. Fantastic. And she comes all the way down from Jersey to this con every year. Like, she's been at every anime that I can remember. So I think, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. That's that's dedication. You know, that's, that's that says a lot about anime as far as anime conventions go, that she would travel and it'd be, you know, worth it. There was a contestant who signed up, and I hope she's here. I just haven't seen her. She came all the way from Texas oh. to animate. And there was another girl who came from New York. Good Lord. To compete. And I, and I don't know. And someone came from Sweden. What? They should get an award just so, for farthest yeah, travel. Yeah, farthest travel. Just <laughs> interna international superstar. Wow. Man, do you think that is because of Heroes of Cosplay? I think it's just because of the... I think it's partially because of Heroes of Cosplay because it is like a syndicated worldwide show. Right, got the But name I think out. it's also because just animates really decided to make a name for themselves. Sure, they they market, market's the key. Yeah, I see them. The closer it gets, I always see the ads all over my Facebook. I'm like, I know, I'm going. Right. Trust me. <laughs> and you got commercials. I've heard of commercials. I've seen the commercials on the CW network. I've seen the commercials on USA Network. Really? I, I saw a SuperCon commercial during Monday Night Raw. What? That's pretty amazing. That's pretty hype. Like, wow. That is insane. Yeah. I saw a Animate Miami commercial on, I want to say it was TBS. Yeah? Is there any convention you haven't been to yet that you'd love to go to? KatsuCon. Are you okay? In Baltimore. I've heard of that one. And ColossalCon in Ohio. I've heard of that one as well. Also... I've been to Awa twice, and I'm dying to go back. Really? Awa's, Awa takes place in a convention center with attached hotel, much like uh, the Mac here. Okay. But the convention center and the hotel are physically connected rather than, like, spiritually connected. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they are so big. They're, it's one of the three, like, like Triforce cons in Atlanta. Okay. You've got Dragon Con, Momo Con, and Awa. Gotcha. And I would love to go back to Awa. I would also really like to go to Dragon Con, although right. I've heard it's kind of dipped down in like popularity lately. Really? I've, I mean, I've heard it's crazy, crazy packed. It's and, always crazy packed. I have heard that. And it's basically a party. Like it's more a party than a convention. Pretty much. I've heard you show up on Tuesday <laughs> for a Thursday convention, and then you don't leave until next Tuesday. So I'd, I'd show up for a week-long party. Like, right, yeah. right. And I've heard, like, you know, the celebrities just pop up and just hang out. You're like, what? I'm hanging out with the dwarf from The Hobbit. Pretty much. That's pretty awesome. That's neat, though. No, I've always wondered. I mean, I don't know if you know the answer to this. I've always wondered how somebody goes about booking a guest for a convention. I'm sure it's through their management. It's it's through their management team. And what happens is is that if we want a guest, we, we, we find a booking agent. And then that booking agent will talk to his people, to, like, his friends and see who books for them. Okay. And then we'll contact the booking agent, and then Mike will work out a contract based on a certain amount that was promised. Gotcha. Okay. Does he take requests? He does. Um, email him. It's Mike. At, uh, no, it's info at floridasupercon.com. Okay. Email him there. Request the guests. Um, you can also request any guests on the Facebook pages and in the Facebook groups because he does check all those. Okay. Um, he's very dedicated. Um, he may not reply, but he'll see it. Okay, sweet. Yeah, because I was wondering that as far as, you know, conventions are obviously put on by people, but they're for people. You know, so if anybody wanted a guest or something, that's how they would Yeah. That's how they would request. That's pretty cool. 
Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So we've got what else? What uh, what other cons are you going to this year? Are this, you done? Is this this it? Uh, anime. I might be going to Chibipa. Okay. In uh, Weston because they moved. Sweet. Um, and I'm probably definitely going to Holiday Matsuri. Cool. I've heard great things about Holiday Matsuri. Holiday Matsuri is growing in leaps and bounds, and it it can be proven because I've never seen anyone else be able to take out a full page ad in the Supercon guidebook. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I'm looking through the guidebook for both Supercon and anime, and all I see is just full page ads for Holiday Matsuri. Wow. And I'm just like, Holiday Matsuri is doing great things. Right. <laughs> they earned a little more than usual. <laughs> I always, uh, I, I mean, it's an anime Christmas con, correct? Yep. So you see a lot of great like Christmas renditions of cosplays. Right. So you see Attack on Titan people with giant candy canes. And you always see like ah. Santa, Santa Vocaloids and things like that. And I and I love the creativity with how they put Christmas spirit in their cosplays. I uh, I was all I was gonna try it. I can't this year because I'll be at UltraCon. But I always wanted to go with uh, my cabbage cart with Christmas lights on it. Yep. And each cabbage had a little Santa hat. <laughs> Christmas cabbages. I was like, you want to talk about on top? Like you thought that was viral. Watch this. Oh God, <laughs> that's gonna go so viral so quick. Can you imagine the cabbage guy show up with a Christmas cart? <laughs> Well, now the secret side of the bag. If you're listening and take my idea, do it correctly, <laughs> please. <laughs> Just don't do Co it. Bad. Copyright Jedi Brian. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just say, hey, I got this idea from Brian. <laughs> and don't look bad, because they'd be like, hey, I got this idea from Brian, and it looks bad. And you're like, you're like that's not me. Tiny Santa hats, Christmas lights, snow on the cart. You're welcome. I know there's more than one cabbage merchant in Florida now. I have seen him. It's crazy. I have seen him. I, I do like what the other cabbage guy did, where it was like a game. Yes, he made money. Yeah, he, it was $10, and you get to play the game. He had his cart's full of prizes. I was like, that is genius. I, me and him, like, geeked out at, at Megacon. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I got the idea from another cabbage merchant in Tampa. I was like, how many are there? <laughs> like, there's, there's dozens of us. I've started the trend. <laughs> there's dozens of them. Right. Dozens. And I was like, I need to do something else. <laughs> now my character's represented. Right. <laughs> but there's no way out. There's, you, you are the cabbage guy. Yeah, like. there's no way out. <laughs> No, I'm thankful. It's awesome. Have you seen the, the logo for the podcast here? I have not. I'll have to show you. All right. It's a cabbage with headphones on and nice. lightsabers <laughs> behind it. It's perfect. I love it. It was uh, designed by Bradley. Actually, Bradley. Builder Bradley Cosplay. He he designed a shirt idea for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Another Kirby? Yeah, a Kirby shirt. I love it. I love it. Well, would you believe we're basically at an hour? Nice. That's, that's the entire podcast. That one's so perfect. Nice. All right. Do you have a good time? Damn. Damn. Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. Beautiful. It, it's cool, though, right? It's very just very good. relaxed, very chill. Yeah. I like it better. Because, like, when you tell people there's, it's like an interview or something, a lot of people, like, tense up and try to get, like, all right, let's right. do this. And I'm like, eh, let's just talk about stuff you like. I, I had to do that earlier because I was being filmed by the cosplay documentary team. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, let's interview you. And I was like, okay, let me just got to represent. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Here I'm just like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> what do? Right? Yeah. Uh, words, cosplay. Words, cosplay, Super love. Con. Love, chill. Yeah, love, chill. No chill to no heroes chill. of cosplay. Miggy's awesome. Bring Miggy back. Hashtag. Yes. If you take nothing else from this. <laughs> uh, hashtag bring Miggy back. Supercon Toby endorses Miggy. <laughs> I, I endorse Miggy Con, yes. Uh, yeah, Miggy Con. That's what we need. <laughs> the semi-clothed semi, uh, men. clothed <laughs> men. The, the, the best Mickey cosplay takes first prize. Exactly. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thank you for coming on. No problem. No problem at I all. I thoroughly appreciate it. We'll have to come back and tell us how William Shatner is. Sure. we Will do. <laughs> hit, hit me up at Supercon. I'll be right there. Yes. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, Facebook.com slash Supercon Toby. Sweet. Um, I'm on Instagram, too, but I don't use that, so don't find me there. <laughs> I have a name that's taking up space yeah. on the internet. I have a name, but I have to have it because it's my name. Right, and it's yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Well, thanks. No problem. And boop. <laughs>